haven't shown you guys the inside of my chicken coop in a while. <laughs> we do the deep litter method and so it was getting a bit dirty. So I put down some new pine shavings. They didn't like me doing that very much. <laughs> but yeah, this is our chicken coop. It's a pretty small coop. We've got a lot of birds in here, but there are enough roofs. I did make a YouTube video all about building it. Not really like plans or anything like that. Go check that out if you want to see the build of it. But they're happy in it. And they want me to get out of their space. <laughs> this is their nest boxes and those eggs that are in there are fake eggs. We use those a while back to train them to use the nest box because they were going like all over the place. I think they know by now that these are the nest boxes, but they're still in there and they'll probably stay in there. <laughs> I just fed and watered everybody this morning, but it looks like they need more water. So I'll probably come back out here very soon and give them more water. Typically I leave their door open, um, but last night Scuba jumped out and I guess she spent the night outside. Scuba's that one, she's my favorite. And I should have counted them, but I didn't. I was being lazy last night. So we're gonna have to count them because I feel like she's very lucky that she didn't get like frostbite or something. This is the area behind the chicken coop and honestly, it's a mess. It's just kind of like a lot of scraps back here. But if that mound on top of that hardware cloth right there tells you anything about how much snow we got, yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of snow. And my chickens all hate it. <laughs> Gotta go back to the rabbit tree so I can show you guys some babies. There's my grow out bun buns. Hi guys. How is everybody? You all doing okay? These are the only rabbits that are outdoors right now. Yeah, this is the rabbit tree area. As you can see, we've got lots of things out here, lots of scraps and whatnot. I have all of these toys that have been sitting in my office for a really long time and I just haven't brought them out to the rabbits. So we're gonna go ahead and give them all their toys. If you guys want to know where I got these cute little jingle balls. These are probably one of my favorite rabbit toys um, cause they like rolling them around and tossing them and whatnot. Uh, but they are on the All Things Bunnies website. And if you do order them, tell them that Tealstone Homestead sent you. So we're gonna give one of these to Roulette. <laughs> we're gonna give one to Vanilla. Go lady. We're gonna give one to Sparrow. I don't know if you can see Vanilla over there carrying hers around. Do you like them? They're so fun. They're so fun. <laughs> you like it, don't you? Vanilla always likes to grab onto stuff. Yeah. I forgot Roulette had this tiny little cat toy in here. They don't seem to like them as much as these giant balls. Drizzle already had one. This was the first one that I ever got and I really, really like them. Drizzle is actually gonna be cold and we'll talk about why here in a bit. We'll give another one to these gr two girls living together. Do you like it? Is that fun? They don't care. <laughs> they are not having it. And then finally, we're gonna give this last one to Mr. Rody here. I think since you girls aren't really wanting anything to do with it, we're gonna give it to one of the bucks. Let's give it to Churro. Here you go, Churro. Some people ask me if my PVC braces were wobbly. The only one that's wobbly is the buck hutch because it's not braced up against anything. But over here, like most of them, you can see that little screw right there. It's screwed into a uh, support. So these are like really, really sturdy. So these don't wobble one bit. And uh, same with that one. And same with this one. But with the bucks, 
I haven't been able to screw them into anything yet. I keep having people ask me how the smell is in here. Honestly, it's not that bad, but I do have to keep up with it a lot more than when they were outside. The thing about the trays is that obviously the liquid doesn't go anywhere, but we use pine pellets, which are really highly absorbent. So that does help a lot. But again, every week I have to go through like with a dustpan and like kind of spot clean everybody. Um, every month or so I'm going through and dumping the trays completely. But I will let you know that I don't think I plan on using the trays throughout the summer. I think what I'm gonna end up doing, and I'm sure that many of you have seen this, but I am gonna end up rigging um, some plastic roofing to slope forward so it will come out this way and we're gonna have like some sort of gutter system and drainage so that we can more easily collect poop and then the pee drains out and we can just throw that out every day. I think that's kind of like my ideal plan. So that is what we're gonna be doing in the future. But for right now, for bringing them in and because I didn't want them out this winter because it's just too much, this is working just fine. But yes, I every time I come in here and smell ammonia, it means that it's time to spot clean. So I'm not gonna lie to you guys and say that it just smells great. It is what it is right now. And so it is working. I probably should have waited until after I was done talking to give them their toys because now you guys are gonna be hearing jingling throughout this entire video. So yeah, honestly, I'm just still very, very happy that they're in here and I am gonna have to clean the concrete. <laughs> Somehow it is getting underneath the plastic and I keep trying to figure out how this is happening. I'm not sure how it's happening. So this summer we're gonna have to completely remove everybody, scrub everything down and just kind of reformat things. So that'll probably happen, actually it'll probably happen in the spring once I can get out here, once I have enough free time over a weekend or something. Or maybe that's a vacation project because every vacation that I've been taking from work is now a staycation and I'm working on stuff around here. <laughs> I can come out easily during the day, refill everybody's water, not have to worry about lugging a five gallon jug through a foot of snow that is currently in my backyard. I feel like I did get them in here just in time because I would have not wanted to take that much water through that much snow. I don't even know how I would do it with the amount of rabbits that I currently have. Also, it makes it much easier to evaluate everybody and really take the best care of everybody that I can. So no regrets of them being in here. <laughs> I haven't fully decided if the big cages are going back out in the big hutch or not. I guess when that time comes, we'll see where we are with all of this but it is a nice option to have. So it's not going anywhere. We're not tearing it down or anything like that. Um, it's a nice option, so, but I haven't decided what we're gonna do with all of them. But this summer, we plan on using a stand-up air conditioner for this room because it is probably going to get hot, so we are planning on trying to air condition and seeing how much that's going to cost and also if it's efficient. But like I said, this room is semi-insulated, so I think it might actually work pretty well. We just have to make sure that there is constant airflow because that is one of the biggest things for me is making sure that everybody has airflow so we don't develop any sort of respiratory distress or anything like that. So on my last video, I talked about how we were going to be needing to call clove, which is very unfortunate. Um, and I had a lot of people ask why, what happened, and all of that. Basically, guys, after we bred her this last time, she lost condition extremely quickly. She became very emaciated. She got really scaly, flaky skin, very rough coat, and she also developed two grape-sized cysts on the back sides of both of her feet. So uh, all of that, and then once she had those cysts, she no longer wanted to move around anymore. She was noticeably uncomfortable, so we decided to call her. I know a lot of people were just like, take her to the vet and all of that, but it's just not cost effective. And I know that sound, I don't want it to sound heartless, but also it's just that we are homesteaders. We don't really make a lot of money doing this, uh, if any, from the rabbits, to be totally honest with you. So, um, it's just, it's better to rely on strict calling practices rather than giant vet bills that are just gonna put us in a bigger hole. So um, since we can call, that's what we do. And it is really, really hard to lose 
especially a rabbit like that that I've been through litters with and I kind of have a relationship with, it's very hard to lose them. Um, but it is the most humane thing to do to end their suffering instead of just letting them die naturally. If you see an animal suffering, you either need to treat it or you need to put it out of its misery. Something crazy that happened before we called her is that I was completely wrong on whether or not she was pregnant and she delivered nine babies, which is crazy. And I don't understand where they even were in her because of how small she was. So I just think that's nuts. Um, so she delivered nine babies. And during that day, Tundra and Twix also delivered their babies. So we quickly took cloves and fostered them into both of those litters, despite how many there were. And then we called Clove. The unfortunate thing about her babies though, is that for some reason this litter has had an incredibly high mortality rate. So unfortunately we are only left with three of them. I don't really anticipate losing any more of them. So uh, Tundra currently has two of them and Twix has one. But very exciting stuff is that, like I said, Tundra and Twix gave birth. Tundra was paired with Sprig and she gave birth to five blacks and two blues. I'm so excited to have blues again because the last time I had blues was last spring, so it's been a long time. I love blues, I think they're gorgeous, and I might actually end up keeping one if they turn out well. Like I said, there's only two, so they would have to be really, really nice blues. And then Twix had four chocolate, one blue, and two blacks. She was paired with Sprig also. This is kind of a test breeding because Sprig is actually Twix's sire, so it is that's called an inbreeding. And so the reason that I'm doing that is because I need more of Sprig's traits. So I decided to test an inbreeding. Typically what happens when you inbreed rabbits is you end up with either the very best or the very worst traits of each of those rabbits. So I'm really hoping that through this test breeding we can end up with babies that look a lot like their father because Sprig is a really nice looking rabbit. So I'd really like them to look like that. And we're really trying to work on our chocolates too. Our chocolates are very, very minimal here. So we're trying to do best by them for sure, especially because they are an approved variety of Silver Fox now. In my last video, I also talked about how very briefly, Cassia may have gone through a false pregnancy. And so I rebred her and I wasn't really sure when she was due. Turns out my suspicions were correct. <laughs> so Cassia should be due on February 9th. So she hasn't given birth yet, she's just been feverishly nesting for the last week or two, so I'm expecting babies from her in the next several days. At least when I film this, it'll probably be really close to the time that she delivers by the time this video actually goes up. So I will make sure to put that on Instagram, which you can follow me on Instagram right here. And also I'll try to put something maybe on Facebook or something like that. We do have a Facebook group called Tealstone Homestead Friends. It is growing and I love my group, you guys. It's so much fun. So if you haven't already and you're on Facebook, you should definitely request to join that group. And one more thing that I wanted to talk about, which I know some people are gonna be like, oh my gosh, why are you talking about this? Other people are gonna be like, thank you for talking about this. Let's talk about split penis or hypospadias in male rabbits. This is something that is very important to understand and be able to recognize if you're gonna be a responsible rabbit breeder. Hypospadias is actually something that can be an anomaly, like a genetic defect, or it can be hereditary. So you wanna be careful about rebreeding those rabbits that we're showing hypospadias, but also uh, sometimes just know that it is an anomaly. It can happen. It doesn't mean that you're a bad rabbit breeder, but it should be cold out. Recently, I have found a split penis in one of my rabbits, and it's Drizzle, which is one of Clove's older daughters that won best opposite sex as a junior doe in December. So it's very weird that no judge saw it. It's very weird that I never saw it, but Many times split penises can look like does at first, and so that's another reason why it's kind of important not to 100% sex your rabbits until they're at least between 8 and 12 weeks old. And even then, sometimes they can hide for a really long time. Drizzle, for example, did not start to show that she had a split penis, and I keep saying she, it's actually a he. <laughs> Drizzle actually did not start to show that he had a split penis until he was about four and a half months old, which is crazy to me. 
And the thing about Drizzle is that he's almost five months old now and he doesn't even have testicles yet, which is kind of concerning. Split penises are something that you really shouldn't allow in your rabbitry, so if you do find one, you really should cull it. There are varying degrees of how big the split can be. Sometimes it's just on the very end, sometimes it goes all the way down. You wanna call hard, especially for the splits that go all the way down because that can cause fertility issues in the future. Split penises can also cause the rabbit to pee sideways and they can get urine scald from that, which can present other health problems. So really it's not something that you wanna deal with. It's not something that you should encourage breeding with. So if you do see a split like this, then I would definitely call. When you go to press down to check the sex of your rabbit, if they have a split penis, it may look like a normal penis at first, but when you flip it up, you will notice a split going all the way down. Sometimes it's not so intense, um, but this is something that you should definitely call for. You shouldn't allow this rabbit to breed and you should call it out of your herd. So unfortunately for Drizzle, we are going to be calling him. We're going to be tanning his hide and making bone broth with him, so. This is a homesteading channel, guys. I'm just really glad that we found it before we ended up showing him as a doe again and then would have gotten disqualified and that would have sucked too. But I did find another doe in one of Clove's previous litters and I will be keeping her around. She is so nice. She poses up really, really well. She's got some funky hair going on right now, but I really love her. I think she's so cute. So. Uh, we don't have a name for her yet, but if you watched one of my recent live streams, she is the one that did not fall off the table. <laughs> and you will only get that reference if you watch the live stream. If you guys want to know more about split penises and rabbits, I'm gonna link a link below. It goes to a site called MediRabbit, and I highly recommend MediRabbit for researching many types of rabbit illnesses. I think that that is a great website and I'm not affiliated with it at all, but I do highly recommend it. I love that it gives evidence-based research to support the medical side of things. A lot of the times people try to diagnose things without actually having research done behind it, so I really appreciate when something actually is well-researched and that is exactly what MediRabbit does, so I really appreciate that. I am gonna link that down in the description down below. I keep forgetting to show you guys Mira's current babies, but they are so stinking cute. This is a repeat breeding between Mira and Sprig. I really liked how they turned out the first time. This is the same pairing that made Roulette, so really like them, they're so cute. And uh, yeah, there's like nine of them. I think there's nine of them, so they're so cute though. Look at you. Look at you and your cute little face. You are so cute. I think that they are four or five weeks old now. They're so, so cute though. So chunky. All right guys, so I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. I hope you enjoyed seeing my rabbits get their new toys and also seeing the new babies that we have and learning a little bit about hypospadias. Hopefully I don't get demonetized for that. <laughs> don't forget to drop a comment down below, leave a like for me and hit that bell so you know every time I upload a new video or go live. My live streams are somewhat sporadic now because I do tattoo live streams now, so sometimes I'll just get on and we'll just start talking and it's a lot of fun. I enjoy interacting with you guys. If you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. So that is gonna do it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.